give it up. Give up that war. You know the war that you have to really fight? is the war against yourself. You have to fight a war against yourself. Now it's not easy to look in the mirror and to change your own life. It's hard as hell. You have to take responsibility. You have to learn new things. You have to feel uncomfortable. Good, because discomfort is how we grow. That's how we become strong. If you run away from discomfort and resistance your whole life, you will always be weak. And most people don't like being uncomfortable. If you don't want to be uncomfortable, please do not pursue success. Because success is very uncomfortable feeling. And I just learned to be, I learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Your comfort zone is irrelevant. What matters is what are you trying to do with your life? Future you is going to give you advice on what to stop, what to start on what a more courageous action would be. What's the first thing they would tell you to be or do to be more courageous? You ain't gonna have much of a life. If you play it safe, you won't have much of a life. Life is risk. It take, it take courage to pursue your dream. Now it's gonna cost you something. Most people are not willing to pay what it costs to go after your dream because you're gonna have to hurt a little bit. And those are the times when you want to run and hide. You gotta be able to find energy. You gotta make up games, make up tricks, make up whatever you can to get to the next evolution of life. All successful people, if they fail, they fail by trying greatly, not by playing it safe and wishing and hoping that everything will work out all right in the future. What they do is they take great risks with no guarantee of success, and so can you. Rich people don't sleep eight hours a day. That's a third of your life. You cannot be sleep eight hours a day. We do not retreat. We do not give up. We do not surrender. And the reason why most of you are not successful is because every single time stuff not going your way, you give up, you quit, you let go. And people feel weakness, they feel it. You can feel when somebody's not committed, when they're not all in, when they're not dedicated. If you want freedom, there's going to be an element of risk. There's going to have to be sacrifices made. There's going to have to be late nights, extra hours, persistence, and most importantly, growth. If you don't become someone else, you will not be able to earn your freedom. The person you are right now might not be good enough for the life you want. If you really want it, you're going to have to become someone else else the voice in my head said you know what man you're gonna die never even trying to reach your full potential and how's that gonna feel so i'm gonna, I'm gonna live even while i'm dead i'm gonna be because i believe in a higher power whatever it may be i don't know what it is i believe that your mind lives forever some spirit some, something lives forever i'm gonna be haunted by the mere fact that i literally just that's what I was. You wasted that life. That's what I was, man. You look back and here lies David Goggins, a punk. That's it. And I get to live. So whatever heaven or hell is, you're in hell the rest of your life. The rest of your life. And if there is a God, with the hope to God there is, knowing what I put myself through now, whatever memories I have, if there's any at all, I'll be a happy man. But I knew that I was gonna pay for this while I was living or while I was dead. I was gonna pay for this, because basically to me, it was a huge sin. I'm basically just gonna sit here and just be a comfortable man and that not even try. Sin. Wasting your life is a sin, it's right? It's a sin. It is. I'm, I'm not even gonna try. I want you to get over this notion that I find so annoying that so many people have, that success and power in life is dependent on something like genetics. Like some people are born with a larger brain or they have wealthy parents who are able to send them to the right school, or, <laughs> or it's all a matter of luck. What really makes people successful and powerful in life, and it's not just me saying this, I read hundreds of books on the subject, what makes people successful is their degree of motivation. Yeah, I could repeat it a hundred times, but it's true every time I say it. When you are motivated, when you feel yourself emotionally engaged in the subject, 
you learn faster. You learn what it takes somebody 10 years to learn, you can learn in two years. When you feel emotionally engaged with something, you're able to push past all the obstacles. The sense that it's genetics or the size of our brain or our parents' money, you can't control any of that, obviously. And it can become kind of crutches for some people. But the amount of motivation you feel, the emotional connection you have to what you're studying or doing, that is something within your control. That is something you can choose to take. And it is, you, you're going to find people giving you all kinds of great advice about your careers, about where you should go, you know, your MBA, etc. But if there's one piece of advice that I think is more important than that, is the, is, it is this idea of following this, these natural inclinations and creating your own career path and finding a way to engage those deepest motivating parts of your psyche. Unhappiness is simply the lack of progress toward a preset goal. If you're not making progress, see, that's when unhappiness sets in. But here's where happiness begins. Making progressive progress. You don't have to arrive all at once. You don't have to have it immediately. But as long as you're making progress, as long as progress is part of your experience now, it is a fantastic source of inspiration. Now here's the next one. Source of inspiration, and that is achieving. When you finally have arrived at that goal that you set, I want to have this much experience and be able to do this by 30 days from now, 60 days from now, six months from now. And finally, that six months passes, and there you are. Finally, the time passes, and you have it. Finally, the time passes, and the skill is now beginning to be polished, and it is so unique and effective. Achieving is an incredible source of inspiration. But here's what we notice. When you do achieve, whatever you set out in the beginning where you decided and planned and you got started and you progressed, when you finally achieve, that achievement is not much more inspiration than when you decide. It's a different kind of inspiration. It's a different kind of feeling uh, to having arrived, uh, knowing that you've got many other objectives to accomplish, many other places you want to go, things you want to do, uh, the person you want to become. But at least I've got this one. You know, I've done this one. As the saying on the wall of the inner city school reads, God don't make no junk. Each person is capable of achieving excellence in some way, in some area. You have within you, right now, the ability to function at genius or exceptional levels in at least one, and perhaps several different intelligences. Your job is to find out what it could be for you. Your responsibility to yourself is to cast off all these self-limiting beliefs and accept that you are an extraordinarily capable and talented person. You are engineered for greatness and designed for success. You have competencies and capabilities that have never been tapped. You have the ability within yourself right now to accomplish almost any goal you can set for yourself if you are willing to work long enough and hard enough to achieve it. The good news about beliefs is that all beliefs are learned. They can therefore be unlearned, especially if they are not helpful. When you came into the world, you had no beliefs at all about yourself, your religion, your political party, other people, or the world in general. Today, you know a lot of things. But as the comic Josh Billings once wrote, it aren't what a man knows what hurts him. It's what he knows what aren't true. There are many things that you know about yourself that are simply not true. And these are almost always in the area of self-limiting beliefs. The starting point of unlocking more of your potential is for you to identify your self-limiting beliefs and then ask what if they were not true at all? What if you were possessed of an extraordinary ability in an area where you didn't think you were very good at all, such as selling entrepreneurship, public speaking or money making? Everywhere I go throughout the world, I have taught these principles to many tens of thousands of people. I have filing drawers full of letters from people who had never heard this idea of self limiting beliefs before. But once they heard it, they changed their entire attitudes towards themselves. They began to see themselves as far more competent and capable in key areas of their lives than they had ever been before. In no time at all, they began transforming their lives and changing their results. Their incomes doubled and tripled and quadrupled. Many of them became millionaires and multimillionaires. 
They went from the bottom of their companies to the top, from the worst performer in their sales forces to the highest earning person in their companies. After they changed their beliefs about themselves and their personal potentials, they learned new skills and took on new challenges. They set bigger goals and threw their whole hearts into achieving them. By questioning their beliefs and by refusing to accept that they were limited in any way, they took complete charge of their lives and careers and created new realities for themselves. And what countless others have done, you can do as well.